Hey, Jeff, it's Brian. Hey, what's up, brother? Hey, what's going on? Ah, uh, you know, a little bit of this and a lot of that. Oh, yeah, sounds like a lot of that. A lot of interviews today, <laughs> huh? right? Right? So, yeah. Uh, I mean, um, I mean, this must be about our fifth or sixth interview. Um, you know, we usually talk about uh, Brooklyn pizza and junk like that because we're both from, <laughs> because we're both from Brooklyn. You know, that's right. So uh, keep it real. Yeah. <laughs> So wet third release in Rage and uh, Earth Rage and um, March twenty third uh, Frontier Records. Um, I mean, I listened to it this morning a couple times and stuff like that. It's a masterpiece. Oh, I, was, I thought you were going to say it's a piece of crap. No, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You know, I mean, every song's kick ass. You know, so thank uh, you, man. I, I was happy with uh, the entire thing and. Uh, um, that's the third one. And uh, how do you get along with the the rest of the guys in the band now? Uh, is it just like family? It, we're like gangbusters, man. We we get along so well. It's uh, these guys are they're the kindest, coolest people, and they always have been. And it's, especially now that a lot of you know the, they're they're all blowing up. The the bands are blowing up. Uh, Eclipse especially. They're doing better than a lot of the things that I've done the past 15 years. Um, so for them to have that level of groundness still, and when we get together, we, we, we have the utmost respect for one another. We all know what the big picture is for WET. You know, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. We're not trying to uh, reinvent ourselves or experiment and challenge ourselves. You know, we, we, have, we know what we have to do for WET. We we have a responsibility to the record company because this is their baby. You know, Frontiers was the mastermind be putting us together to to create this thing. But we also built a fan base with our own fan bases, and on top of that, we've been able to bring people in that actually just like this band. Probably don't even like the other stuff that we do outside this band. So we have a responsibility there, and we know exactly what to fulfill for both levels. You know, for the for the fans and for the the record company who expect a certain level. And it's it's easy for us because we all we keep keep doing is taking the three bands, the the level of what we, where we all come from, the work of art, Eclipse, Talisman, angle, and keep utilizing that. And from that, that's how you got that first album. We had some great songs on that one, and we just keep churning them out into the into Earth Rage, our third album. Right now, now, how do you actually have time? You got Son of Apollo. Uh, you had the Rep- Retribution. Uh, you know, album. Retribution, uh, yeah. Yeah. Re- re- yeah, whatever. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> Reprimanding. And, and you have, uh, you know, Talisman, Soto, all this other stuff. I, I, I see also Talisman uh, just put out some new merchandise, too, a new shirt. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know. Well, go ahead. The, the, way, the way it works is, the bottom line is, this is what I do for a living. You know, mm-hmm. people go to work, they, 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 they get maybe two weeks off or maybe a month off of vacation, but they're working 11 months out of the year. They go to work every single day. You don't ask somebody, how do you go to work? How do you make a living? How do you make your payments, your house payments? Right. Because you get up in the morning and you, you devote your, your full day into work and you come home. This is what I do. Right. I, it doesn't, it, it's not rocket science to write an album, record an album, and, and move on to the next one within the next couple of weeks because this is what I do. I wake up, I, I and and I, it's just my life. So it, it's I could actually do fifty times more than I do, but obviously that just pisses off the record companies and pisses off the bands that you're spreading yourself out. But the bottom line is I have the time, the, the flexibility because this is what I do. I I think, breathe, eat, and shit music. You know, it's <laughs> it's, it's what it it's what I do. So uh, it, in doing three albums, especially with Retribution, Wet. And Sons of Apollo back to back to back. It, it really it wasn't it, it wasn't that harrowing. It wasn't like oh my god I'm exhausted I'm mentally drained. No, it, it was actually a great challenge because I had to do these three during the time and I, I didn't really have a break. It was a brilliant high. It was a it, it was like a it was like a frenetic crazy this is awesome feeling like being on a, the biggest baddest roller coaster. Right. So for me, it was it was a thrill to knock these three albums out in the, the little time that I had to do them. And, and when I was done, I'm like, come on, give me more. <laughs> Put me in, coach, you know? Cool, cool. Definitely, definitely. Now, is touring one of your favorite things in life? Less and less. 
as I'm getting older. Uh, and I, and I, in touring, not so much. I, I absolutely, positively love the uh, the energy I get from the crowd. I I'll never lose that. Right. The touring end is just being away from home, being away from family, uh, the gruelingness of not getting the the right sleep in between shows because you know you, you have a night where the bus breaks down or you just can't you can't turn off or something happens at home that takes your mind off. You, all these little factors start making touring not as fun as it used to be. When you're younger, it was all exciting. You could get drunk, you pass out, you wake up when you want. You just you know it was a different time. Now I'm older. I gotta I I gotta think a little more and be a little more respectful to myself, my body, and 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 uh, especially the audiences. That that comes first. You can't go out there half cocked and waking up hungover and your voice is trash because you were talking all night and drinking all night. You you got a responsibility. These these people working their asses off just so they can come and see you and they're supporting you. You got to deliver. Right. So there's a lot more stress behind it, and that takes the fun away from touring for me i i if i could do less i would but if i'm going to do more it's got to be at a level of of comfort that gets me through each night each show that doesn't make me think oh god there's a pressure of having to pull this off because then it stops being fun right and and once it stops being fun yeah that's when you just don't want to do it anymore right, right. and i i do want to keep doing it i just i just it has to be of a certain level otherwise it, it, it will start weighing on you right right when you do go on tour and stuff like that, um, do you ask for anything special, like on a tour rider or, or like for yourself? Not necessarily. It is no, nothing that's not easily attainable. I don't like to be a pain in the ass or a burden. I don't. I don't. I don't make tour, tour contract riders that that state something specific that's really difficult to get. And if it's not there, I'm not showing up, or the show's canceled. I don't do any of that diva right. bullshit. That, you know, I make it as easy as possible uh, to to meet the parameters of maybe my diet or my uh, my health plan or whatever I'm uh, whatever I'm working on at that moment, and I just I, I write it out. If it's not there, no big deal. You know, shit happens, and you, you move on with it. Right. Instead, of, you, you can't dwell on stupidity because it, it just it turns around and bites you in the ass later. Right, right. Well, what's your favorite food when you do go on tour? Sushi is one I could do every day. Right. It's it's healthy. It it keeps the calories down, and it's something I absolutely love. I, I I could eat sushi every single day if if they could put that on a on a tour rider, I would love it. But it's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> wow. People say ah, I don't think so. We'll we'll give you pizza at the end of the show. Oh great! Uh, there goes the waistline. I, I think everybody's sick of pizza. You know, like yeah, you know, that's all I hear from uh, artists and stuff. Pizza, pizza, pizza. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, I think the arteries are sick of it too. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, are, are you working on anything uh, in progress right now? At the moment, um, the only thing we're we're kind of advanced planning is the next Soto outing. I mean, I spent I spent a good solid two years promoting this band, and I'm not about to let it go just because uh, even the ba band like Sons of Apollo is really taking off. Um, we we are going to follow up with a new album, uh, hopefully next year. We're we're starting with a couple songs. I, I think we're we're discussing exactly what we're going to do if we're if we're going to put them out uh, as as just as singles and, and just kind of drop them one at a time. We, we're 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 working all that out right now. We got an idea who's gonna who's gonna you know fill the shoes of our beloved David Z, which, which wasn't an easy task, but uh, we do want to move on with it, especially in his honor. Um, and aside of Sons of Apollo, I, I've, that, that's pretty much all I got the, the whole year is Sons of Apollo and TSO. So everything else is going to have to be put on hold. It, we got this new Wet album, and that's what we're here to talk about. Right. But as far as touring and everything, it's, it, it truly is right now Sons of Apollo and Soto after this Wet album. Right. Now, how, how do uh, Frontiers uh, treat you as an artist? You know what? I, I've been involved with them for so long. We have we we get along like like brothers. We we get along like family. Right. You know, we have our arguments and disagreements just like family, just like brothers do. But for the most part, we have the utmost respect for one another. I know what they can do for me, and they know what I can do for them. And that's one of the things that keeps that bond really strong. Um, I'm excited to continue working with them into the future. I'm, I'm extremely proud of what they've been able to achieve for themselves, especially from the ground level. When I first started with them, just to see all the the, the level of where they've taken this, it's a uh, it's a mighty achievement, especially in this day and age. And they just continue to uh, to thrive. So 
we we treat each other with the same level of respect that we started this back in 2002. Wow. Do you enjoy making videos? To, to me, that's kind of the necessary evil. I really don't, and, uh -huh. and I'm glad it's not as much uh, – it's not such a, a staple as uh, when MTV and, you know, when there were avenues that were, it was part of the album recording cycle. You had to make videos. It was great that you could leave the direction and all that stuff to somebody else, but now the budgets are so low, you kind of have to improvise and come up with something that's interesting enough or not cheesy doesn't come across as just horrible and that to me is is the worst part about making them because you don't have the big budgets and locations and all that stuff and if it's going to look if it's going to look low budget then what's what's the point so i don't like doing them because it's it's hard to get past that low budget look based on the low budgets that are available since you don't really have the kind of play you do anymore but you know i I, I just put up with it. <laughs> I don't really, I, I never really like doing videos. Right, right. What would you say is, you know, a couple of the highlights in your music career? Um, I think my highlights are more recent. Uh -huh. I would have to say what I'm doing now and, the, and the, the level of what I'm doing now is a highlight based on the fact that I, I had to struggle and, and push and kick and scratch and, bleed and sweat for so many years before that and now it's enabled me to kind of not write my own ticket but it, it gives me a chance to uh to, to truly appreciate everything that I've, I've worked so hard in doing and and you know something like wet is a is a true testament to that i i can do an album like wet and it doesn't have to be followed up with a tour it doesn't have to be followed up with a full-on commitment we can do a great record and people will latch onto it and dig it and they'll wait for us. If we're going to tour, if we're going to do some shows, they're waiting for us, and that's that's a beautiful thing to have now. Right, right. Now, when you're playing with uh, different artists, uh, are you ever in awe of, of, like, who you get to play? Like, you know, when fans get to meet you, you say, oh, man, I, I, I just met Jeff, you know, like that. Is there any musician that uh, really uh, knocked you off your uh, socks? Yeah, I, I still have that, that level of fandom. I mean, I, I have that level even with... Sons of Apollo, for instance, all these guys are heroes of mine. I, I, one of the reasons when, when Portnoy called me and asked me to sing for for this band, you know, sight unseen, I, I hadn't heard one note. I didn't even know musically what we were going to do. I said yes before he could finish his sentence right. because I'm such a fan of his, and I've wanted to do an album with him for so long. I've, I've known Billy Sheen for 30-some-odd years. I've wanted to do a record with him. To be able to do an album with both of those guys in the same band, uh, I mean, pinch me. This is great. Right. I'm on stage sometimes, and I, I look over my shoulder. I'm like, that's Mike Portnoy. That's Billy Sheen. This is fucking cool. <laughs> so, yeah, I still have that level of of being a fanboy, and I never will lose that because you you kind of need that, not only to stay grounded, but to appreciate and to, to keep the level of hunger I, I, that I had when I was starting as a, as a young artist. Right, right. I think I think it's important to to kind of retain that because it's it's going to show in the music. It's going to show even from my uh, on stage persona. Right. Cool. Now, do you ever think that uh, Earth Rage would, uh, you know, make it to final? Maybe. Oh, absolutely. They uh, I I've heard they're they're doing all formats between the digital CD and. Uh, who knows? They might even come up with a cassette version. Wow. But it's definitely going to be on vinyl. It, it, the, all my latest releases on Frontiers have been on vinyl, and there's no exception with Wet because we're one of the bigger sellers of, that I that I do for the label. So I'm absolutely positive it'll be out on vinyl. Right. Well, what do you think of that? Everything coming back on vinyl now? It, you know, it's. I think it's more of a. Um, it's more of a nostalgia thing. It's it's a retro thing that people love. People love having a uh, the, the CD was one thing because now it's it's the digital thing is just made it so you do, you have nothing to hold. It's right. music is turned into air. You're buying air. You go on iTunes. You buy an album. You're buying air. You you can't hold it, see it, touch it, smell it. You know. And one of the greatest things, especially us growing up, is when we bought an album. When you first open it up, that smell of the vinyl, the packaging, everything's it's brand new and in your hands. It's like a brand new car. You just you you have such you more of a thrill of listening to the music than you did than you do now when you just order it and download it. There's there's no aroma. There's no right. <laughs> you're not touching and looking at anything. Right. And so I I think people like having that especially young art young people that are buying music 
they they're now experiencing what we experienced growing up. It, it was the norm for us, right. and they're doing it as to, more of a novelty thing, and they're enjoying it. You know, it's 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 new. It's exciting for them. Yeah, I definitely understand that because, like, I remember getting uh, David Bowie's pinup album. And, and like, I, I really didn't even listen to the vinyl. I, I had it on, but, like, I was staring at the cover, you know, like, whoa. And, you know, you get to read all the liner notes and, and, and all Absolutely. the lyrics. And, you know, with the, with the CD, it's so damn small, you know, forget it. But, uh, you know, I, I'm glad a lot of stuff is coming back on vinyl and... Uh, you know, it's it's great. Well, Jeff, I, I think it's important. It's important for music. It's important for the scene. And and again, even if it's a in, on a cult level, right. where it's just a few, you know, a, a one out of every two thousand people are doing it's 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 a great thing to have the nostalgia in there. Right. Definitely. 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 Jeff Scott Soto, Wet Earth Rage. Congratulations, March twenty third for years. Thank you, years. sir. And it's always great talking to you. Uh, feel at home with you. And, uh, you too, Brian. Yeah. Would you like to say anything to the fans out there? All I can say is, you know, keep listening, keep following the music, and 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 thank you for the love and support. You know, w- without you guys, I can't do what I do, and it's a thrill that you allow me to do what I do, and I couldn't thank you all enough. Thanks a lot, Jeff. You got it, brother. Bye bye. All the best.